Uh, you've done a lot of work in the uh, emergency management agency here. Uh, can you tell me the history of uh, emergency management in Huntsville, Madison County? Sure, Steve. Uh, Madison County in Huntsville and here in Alabama has always had a fallout shelter program dating back to the 1960s. Our first director here, that was his major emphasis, was attack preparedness. And over the years, um, the civil defense program, which then was uh, emerged as the emergency management program in our emergency management agency, had more and more other programs, uh, such as hazardous materials, natural disasters, disasters added, but we always kept that attack preparedness component. And it did center around uh, the population protection and the, the fallout shelter. So we, we've always had that. We have a lot of historical re records. Uh, the shelters that we have on our lists actually date back to the 60s. Good. In, uh, in 1993, President Clinton uh, terminated the na nation's uh, radiological monitoring program, and FEMA uh, no longer funded the states. Uh, but uh, Alabama was one of the few states that kept their program. Can you tell me something about that? In regard to radiological preparedness, yes, Alabama has a radiological maintenance and instrument calibration facility here. Uh, we, we kept our instruments at, at uh, really largely our insistence. There are other uh, counties in the state that, that also maintain a radiological program. Uh, and some of the reasons in doing so for us are that number one, we're 28 miles downwind from a nuclear power plant. So that gave us the basis for it. But um, that only required a small number of radiological monitoring uh, sets and uh, trained monitors and other equipment. We also still kept our, our fallout shelter component in and still maintained over 120 uh, radiological monitoring sets for uh, specifically aimed at fallout shelters. I want to comment on the number of shelters that you have and you've kept your records and used them without having to make new surveys. Uh, as you mentioned, the program was ended about 1993. FEMA produced the last, what, what is called National Fallout Shelter Survey list in, uh, at the end of 1992. And that is a master list. Uh, it's produced uh, for every county in the nation. It lists all the buildings that were ever surveyed by the federal government up to that point in time. And we kept that. That, but it's really just an index because it gives the most, the most bare essentials, the uh, name, address, and the capacity uh, for fallout shelter protection of that particular building. No other details. In other words, if you have a building that, uh, say, has two or three wings or six or eight stories, uh, only a portion of that building will be fallout shelter space. And so that leaves you guessing as to where that space would be in that building. Uh, but we had the copies of the original survey records dating back to the 60s. Uh, this work was done, uh, managed by the Corps of Engineers, and there, there are various record types that we have. We don't, uh, every building we, we have uh, in file does not have all the records, but most of them have a fallout shelter sketch. In other words, they went through the building, floor by floor, wing by wing, and identified the fallout shelter space in those, those, that part of the building. For example, uh, we have some uh, high-rise apartment buildings that are eight floors. Well, we have um, sketches for each floor that identify what parts of those floors are uh, offer fallout protection. And we can utilize that. I mean, it's a map. The, the tools are, are right there. If you want to have a fallout shelter program and you, you know what areas of the building are, are usable, then that, that's a huge benefit. It, it eliminates a lot of time and effort of having to go back and re-identify where that, where that shelter space is. So we, we chose to identify enough buildings sufficient to house our, our population, our county population, which is uh, it's just around figures 300,000. And we, uh, we selected the buildings with the uh, larger number of, of uh, shelter spaces in it. Uh, and the buildings with the better protection. There are a number of buildings we, we choose not to, to use because e either they offer very little protection or just have very, very small uh, capacities as far as people. So we're, uh, as we go through it, we're not finished with our pro process. As we go through it, I anticipate we're going to come up with about 140 spaces, I mean, excuse me, 140 buildings, which will 
uh, come up somewhere near our county population. And those, those buildings will, are a mix of publicly owned and privately owned buildings. And as, as we do this, um, we anticipate that, that um, we're going to come out r very close to what our county population is. And, as, and then as we finish, the, the next step would be to train uh, a shelter manager and assistant for, e for each of those buildings. And, and again, we're, we're partway through that prog uh, process as well. Uh, th this is not a local initiative. Aren't you filling the requirements of Homeland Security? Under the Metropolitan Medical Response System, yes. Uh, the uh, MMRS is an uh, umbrella program to match the medical community, hospitals, paramedics, um, mental health as well, uh, with the, the response community. In other words, law enforcement, uh, hazmat, fire and rescue. Uh, so in the event of a, a weapons of mass destruction event or natural disaster or even a hazmat, that uh, if there are casualties who are contaminated or affected by either a chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, or hazmats, that they can be cared for out in the field, not brought directly to the hospital, but they can be monitored and, and, the, and the agent that is affecting them identified. They can be decontaminated while in the field so that when they arrive at the hospital, uh, they are clean, free from contamination, so that they will not contaminate the hospital and lose, say, an emergency room because you bring in a contaminated patient. But as we move through this, uh, there are three mandates, one for biological, one for chemical, and then finally one for radiological and nuclear. And sp speaking specifically to the latter, uh, we, uh, for a population of our size, were tasked to be able to accommodate 7,500 fatalities, 25,000 casualties from a, a, a nuclear biological event, and also 100,000 displaced persons. Now, uh, in dealing with hospitals and responders, they, they, we're, that system is designed to, to handle either fatalities or casualties, and we can do that, uh, although we'd have to expand our, our facilities to handle uh, casualties of that magnitude. But our hospitals and our, our whole MMR system is not designed to handle displaced persons. In other words, people who would be need, uh, who need shelter. And so we had to go beyond our, our medical community and our response community to find places to put these displaced persons. Now, we are mandated uh, at 100,000, but we, we stepped back and looked and said, we, we can't do this for just a portion of our population. So we aimed our pro program at the entire population, again, approximately 300,000. And there are basically two options when you're talking about high-level radiation, and that's either uh, evacuation, which uh, to my mind is preferable. If you can get people away from the hazard, you're going to be miles ahead, but that may not always be possible. Uh, so the other, other alternative is shelter in place. And again, uh, we're, since we're looking at a medical program here, uh, both the medical community and the general public, again, two components. Uh, hospitals are, are a type of facility that, that can't just up and evacuate. They've got, it's a fixed facility. They have all of their uh, medical investment there, equipment and supplies that are built into the building. If you lose the building, uh, you lost your medical capability and, and the staff then just becomes um, evacuees. Uh, same way with the patients. It's going to take a lot of time and effort to evacuate them. So, in particular, facilities like hospitals are really faced with only a shelter-in-place uh, solution to be, uh, operating a high-level radiation environment. It's just unlikely that you're going to move and transfer an entire emergency room and wards of, of patients and staff. It's just it's um, not going to be feasible. So, uh, we had to identify what parts of the hospital uh, offer protection from radiation. And this had, uh, these buildings, our, our hospitals, had not been surveyed in many years. Two of, them, two of our three have not been surveyed at all. So we engaged an engineer to survey uh, five buildings under, that are MMRS facilities. There are three hospitals and two clinics that we felt offered uh, some protection from radiation.